We are live. Hi everyone, Kelly Kay here. Today we're going to hear from newly crowned Microsoft MVP Amit Shandak and who's also a Power BI super user. Stay with us to also be in the running for some great Power BI giveaways. All this and more starting now on your Power BI community show. Thank you for joining us today on the Power BI Community Show. We're making it so much simpler for, for everybody. I, yeah. I, just, I just love it. It's just amazing. There's so much to be excited about. I like to give users degrees of freedom, you know, to explore as much of this as possible. It's just going to revolutionize things. I love it. I love it so much. It's so much easier to visualize the highways of our data. Yes, that's because you use the many to many. And that's when you start using Synapse. Yeah. <laughs> Always great to connect with the community. We'll meet you in the community. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever your local time zone may be. 10th, anniversary, 10th anniversary, or our not 10 years, but our 10th episode. So thank you so much for helping us get here. We really appreciate your support. And we're looking forward to bringing you so much more. Okay, so welcome to the Power BI Community Show 10th episode. Woohoo, Daniel! Our, uh, our community support managers. Um, so thank you so much for helping us get here. Okay. So my name is Kelly Kay. For those of you who have uh, newly joined us, I'm a senior PM uh, serving our awesome Power BI community. I'll be hosting the Power BI community, community show streamed live on the Power BI YouTube channel and the Power Platform YouTube channel. My Twitter is at ms underscore Kelly K. And uh, you can check out past episodes of this show. To comment on this show and be in the running for some fantastic giveaways, please go to aka.ms forward slash PBI show comment. If you comment on, uh, on the show here, you'll be in the running to get some great uh, giveaways. This week, it's Power BI socks, which were huge <laughs> at our Power Platform conference last week. Our show is produced by Daniel Zana. And uh, again, we have our awesome community support team, Natalie and Eileen, to help with answering any of your Power BI community questions, also questions uh, on today's episode. Okay, so every couple of weeks, we'll have a sh few short segments, but our main goal is to celebrate you, the community. And so with that, let's kick off with our newly crowned Microsoft Data Platform MVP, Amit Shandak. Amit is also a Power BI super user. Amit, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Kelly. I'm doing really good and I'm excited about being part of MVP program. Well, we're so excited and thankful for all you do, all of your contributions in the community, along with all of our other super users, like Paul Stork and Greg Deckler and all of these other fantastic people in our community who help so many other people learn about Power BI. So today, I think you're going to show us about, show us some stuff about field parameters, yeah? Yes, we are good. today going to discuss field parameters. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, so field parameters. Do you want to explain a little bit about field parameters? Or for those of you who don't know, field parameters allow our users to dynamically change measures and dimensions being analyzed within their reports. So it can help our uh, users explore and customize the analysis of their reports by selecting different like measure slices and dimensions, right? Amit, is that is that what you're going to show us today? Yes, Kelly. So Awesome. Field parameter is, you know, solving two purpose, one uh, feature. So it gives us flexibility to slice the dimension or axis, and it also gives us flexibility to slice the major. 
So what we are going to do is we are going to show you full flash demo to our um, uh, audience today, how to do it for access or dimension slicer. And then we are going to show a uh, together dash report where both the features are working together. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And um, so with bookmarks, I think we used to do that sort of thing with um, with bookmarks, but we can use field parameters in a more, I don't know, um, effective way or a more streamlined way, right? Is yes. that right? So for Dimension Slicer, the, there are a few ways available and bookmark was one of the ways which was widely used. So what we will do is we will begin our demo by creating uh, how we used to do it in bookmarks and then we'll see how we can easily do it in field parameters okay okay well without further ado please um start your demo i didn't want to delay anymore <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do is i'm quickly going to show uh, my data model and once i show my data model we will go to bookmarks and we are going to use the bookmarks and create this one and then we will jump onto the field parameters Hope my screen is visible now. Yep, perfectly. Okay, so this is my model. Uh, this is basically a sales model where I have a central fact, which is sales table, and it is joined with geography dimension, customer dimension, item, and date dimension. Perfect star schema model, all the relationship from dimension to fact are one to many, single directional. So this is my model, and this model has a major net uh, which I'm going to primarily use uh, in this case. So this is my model. And now let me jump to the visualization layer or the report layer. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a visual first of all. So let me click on the clustered bar visual. And I'm going to build this visual on item brand and my major, the base major net. Okay. Now, what happens when we need the dynamic uh, access? So we want, let's say we are seeing this visual by brand. We would like to change it by, say, let's say, category. Okay. So we will need another visual, which is basically on category. And this is I'm doing because we wanted to use the uh, feature of bookmarks. Then we, I need a third visual. And copy paste, which is on subcategory. Again, subcategory is part of my item dimension, and I'm dragging it. So we have three visuals. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use bookmarks and button and show and hide these visuals. So we go to the view tab and we start seeing bookmarks and selection. Okay. So, and then we need buttons also. So we are going to add the buttons here. So insert and buttons. I'm going to use a blank button. I make it a little bit bigger and then I go to style text on and I'll call it brand. Now, what I typically do is once I set the properties, then only I start copy pasting it so that, you know, I don't have to, you know, do much of the changes. So now I have a name and style all open here. And then I can say, this is category and this button is subcategory. So three buttons, all three ready to show the three axes. How do will they do it? We need to create snapshots. So basically what bookmarks does is we, it creates snapshots in time where, you know, certain things are visible or hidden. So we go here and we say, okay, when I look at brand, I only want to look at brand. So I don't need category. So I hide it in the selection pane and I also hide it subcategory. So only category is visible. And then I go and say, I want to create a bookmark, which I'm going to call as category one. Then I create another one where I say, I want to now see subcategory. So I enable it and I'm going to hide the brand. So only subcategory is visible and we add another bookmark which is subcategory. If I need to rename, I can double click if it is not visible. So let me call it subcat. Then what I need, third one is I only need category. So I hide all other, now only category is visible. 
and then we create another bookmark which is category so this one should have been brand so brand if i look at brand then it is only brand is visible subcategory subcategory is visible category category is visible now we need to assign this functionality to buttons so we click on a button and we go to the action we enable the action and the action which we need here is bookmark so in the action we search type as bookmarks and select a bookmark brand then we go to the second button repeat the same stuff action bookmark and the bookmark is category because the name is category same way action bookmark and subcategory now if you do control and click you see one at a time so you click on brand you see brand you click on category you see category you click on subcategory you see subcategory now let me put them all at one place now look at this it seems like the visuals are changing the axis is changing so this is the older method so kelly lot of work yeah a lot of work and um you know great work though i remember you know chris hamill used to do great bookmark uh dashboards uh reports i should say and uh we did a segment with with Chris a while ago, actually, we did a, a great call where he explained all of this stuff internally. That was about a year, a year and a half ago. But now with field parameters, we don't have to do all of that, do we? Is there an easier way? Yes, yeah. pretty easier way and we okay. will be done in two seconds. So okay. for that, in May 2022, we released this feature field parameters. Mm -hmm. So it's under preview. So what you have to do is go to file, options and setting, options, and under the preview feature, enable this field parameters. And once you enable this feature, you will see a difference under the modeling tab, new parameter. Previously, we only used to have numeric or the what we call what if parameter. Now we have numeric and field parameter. So let me create a new field parameter. So I click on this fields and it opens me. Now it is the single feature for both access as well as major slicer because i'm creating access slicer let me rename that on famously known as dimension slicer because we are using dimensions here which is going to be used on access and after renaming i'm only going to drag my categorical variables which are my dimensions across which i want to cut or analyze my data and it is not that i can bring it from one dimension i can bring it from multiple dimensions oh wow awesome and then it gives an option add slicer to this page so you can add to the current page if you don't do this you can add a slicer and drag the newly added slicer access slicer there so let it add now you got a slicer on this page now how to use that first of all let's look at what we got so we got a table here and this table here have brand category subcategory inside this new name of stuff which is there now available in power bi now this is the table where you have all these properties which is going to do the magic for us now wow. if you want... and so so now we're saying that when we're using field parameters we just drag and drop all of the attributes that we want in the slicer the dax is written for you yeah so we dragged into that one and then we got this slicer and this slices or this table and this table is going to do magic for us okay let's get sorry sorry just want to ask make sure that i was following on <laughs> yeah so now let what we are going to do is we are going to drag this on a visual so we i'm going to create a new visual clustered bar visual and i by mistake made it so control z this should be slicer and let's click on the empty space add another clustered column chart visual and here what we are going to do is we are going to drag the new access slicer on the x-axis and um, any major which we want on the y-axis and now what you see here is basically right now everything is available so you can drill across okay and you will it will be keep on adding but what we are going to do here is we select brand so it's a brand wise we select category 
So it's a category wise. Look, the names are also changing. Wow. Power BI is taking care of that subcategory state. And if you want very similar look and feel of buttons, so you can do here. Give it a little bit of space and go to the slicer properties and make it as horizontal. The responsive slicer and then you got the buttons. Oh, this if is needed, make it single select. Sorry, what did you say? Yeah, and you can just go ahead and select. So it looks like buttons. Wow. Yeah. So and you can make it single select so that you don't choose two in case you only want to keep it single select. So you're effectively creating that one visual with all of the dimensions rather than creating separate visuals and buttons and, and bookmarks. So that's cut your work down by, I mean, 80%. Yes. And what that is going to do is let's bring this one along with major slicer also. So I already created one. So now what's happening here, look at this visual. I have a major slicer on my both Y axis. One is for the majors, which are like gross, nat, cogs. So the moment I change it, you will see that this Y axis is changing. Then I have margins and um, discount as lines and I can add both of them. Wow. And I can keep on playing with category, subcategory, and you will see different visuals are responding differently. So we can decide which visual is going to respond on which things. So all dynamic means we have transferred the power into the hand of end users, what they want to analyze. We can just create one visual and then they can keep on analyzing different stuff instead of creating so many visuals. So how do you like it? I, I mean, I love it. I can see some of the comments coming in. Um, great way of explaining it because you showed us how the bookmarks worked and how we would do it in a kind of roundabout way or maybe, you know, um, that's how we, you know, before field parameters, that's how we, we did things. We just improved things so much in in the Power BI desktop. And you're absolutely right, Amit. We're putting the power back into the people's hands. Yes. Have, have we got some comments here? I think we've got a couple of comments, um, Daniel, and questions. Does anybody have any questions? It says, can you please cover some, oh, that's uh, Guillermo. Uh, can you please cover some com comparison between field parameters and calculation groups? Oh, that okay. might be a whole new show, but I don't know. Can you can we do that now, or do you think it will take a little bit more time? I'll just explain a little bit of difference. Now, when we create a calculation group, it typically converts our majors into a dimension. So it gives us a flexibility to use it as a dimension. So we get all the majors as a dimension. You can use it on axis, uh, especially like on matrix visual, you will be able to move it around up and down. And again, you can use it in slicer. But in case of uh, field parameters, they are not going to become dimensions. Uh, they are still majors. And there is a slicer which is allowing you to play around with your majors. Understood. That's awesome. And look, if anyone else has any comments or questions um, for us, please go into uh, either you can put them in the YouTube chat, but they'll kind of shut down because it's only during the live show. So if you want to know a little bit more, go to https uh, colon forward slash forward slash aka dot ms forward slash pbi show comment <laughs> thanks daniel i love how daniel daniel put that in there what are the other questions that have come up can you see any that have come up right now that uh, amit can help with i love this demo by the way amit oh uh, when we create field parameters automatically dax was created for that anvesh yes. Uh, Amit, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So, yes, the DEX is created. And do you want to make it dynamic? Means want to add something more like Kelly? Like if yeah, city is missing, try. then you want to add, add city. So let's yeah. say city is missing and you want to add. So what we are going to do here is we go here and we copy paste this code. That means this is my <laughs> love feature copy paste. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I just write down the name city. And look, I'm going to rename this as Geography City. And the sequence number I increased, I come back here, I have five, six, seven, whatever I want. Wow. So, so okay, so let's go back to the DAX and we can see the sequence there. We have uh, one, okay, so zero. So it starts with zero, zero, one, two, three, four. So those last 
uh, numbers. And then if we, so obviously the DAX has been created for you. Now, if we minimize the um, the formula um, thing, yep. And so, oh gosh, yeah, we do. We see city there. That's a great way of adding it. Yes. This is fantastic. And you want to see more magic? Yes, we'd love to. See, look at this. The, look at the below table. Don't look at the up table. Okay. See, which top 10 is coming? Okay, so brand and category. So we're looking at the bottom table, right, where it says category top N. Yeah? Yes. So okay. it's category awesome. top N. So it's yeah. top N of the category. Now, look, yeah. this contains everything. So only two values are coming from category. When this is category, now it's brand. It's coming only brand top N. Wow. Now this is what we have done is we did a little bit of top N along with the field parameters and match it. And this is another thing which people find a little bit difficult to show what is selected. So we will just give them just a little bit idea how you can show what is selected by this code. Okay. So what we have done is basically you can't simply say selected value parameter parameter. So we say, okay, what is the selected value of parameter order? And for that you get parameter parameters. And once you get it, then you are ready to do the magic to shift your top ends. What we have done is we are shifting our top end from brand to category based on our selection. So if it is brand, we are saying top to brand. If it is category, we are showing top to category. So the bottom table, you are changing the top 10. Wow. So you can you can use multiple um, slices here, right? So you don't you're not limited to using just one slicer. You can keep adding. I mean, provided that um, you know we're following the data model and we're not confusing the 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 users. Uh, you know, when they're seeing uh, their data being displayed. So, yeah. how many would you say is a good number for people to use? Would you say you know two or three, like a maximum of three? Fill parameters um, in this way with the slices? Yeah. So I think two to three should be good enough number. Uh, like uh, if you have majors which you need to show on the line visuals, we can have two of them. So for majors, which is on par and then line, and then we can have one axis or dimension slicer. Three should do good job. Excellent. Excellent. And what other questions do we have here, Daniel? I know that there were a couple scrolling back could you add an example also establishing a different period of time that's um from eleonora thank you eleonora for your question so are we able to add a time dimension in there as well see i usually use date table uh, so once you use date table all all are just members so we can go here and add let's say date month or something like that yeah and that should work so we copy paste again and, and then, then we date. use month here, and then okay. we say date. And we give one additional number sequence, commit it, cross it out. Yeah, here we go, sorting okay. everything out. So Eleanor, I hope that answered your question and um, thank you so much for asking. And again, if you have any other questions, uh, Amit will be on the um, on the community as well, helping to answer. Go to aka.ms forward slash PBI show comment. And remember, if you comment, we have a couple of pairs of socks to give away. So make sure you comment or tell us if you're using field parameters. Tell us if you're new to field parameters. Tell us what you love about fill parameters, um, and we will be randomly selecting people to win some da -da -da -da, Power BI socks. Isn't that right, Eileen and Natalie? That. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So any other questions? I think we just had one a minute ago, and I, and I saw it flash past, but I did not read it. I apologize, Daniel, uh, our producer. That was, have you seen performance hits on the number of items in the parameters? That's a great question, actually. So Kelly, uh, typically uh, the uh, performance uh, should be much better when we are using the field parameters. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. Um, and if we, and I think it's like then hits on the number of items in the parameters. So have we seen a performance hit on the number of items in the parameter? So how many items could we put 
how many field parameters could we use before we're seeing um, a hit on performance, do you think? Or have you seen? I have not observed uh, any number uh, for okay. that. But uh, but my observation till now is the previous way of major slicer and the current one, which we have with the field parameters, is performed much better. Okay, awesome. And I love your graph. Um, and I know you know we're not big fans of pie charts, but I do love um, <laughs> I do love the the pie charts. Um, and I love your graph here. Um, clicking on a slicer, can we change the background color back to blue? Can we do that? Let's, Means, ha let's have a look. Uh, uh, so if let's say uh, if I'm selecting category and I want a particular color and then subcategory, I want a, a different color. Again, we have to go back to the same way. We have to use the selected value and based on the selected value, then we have to say if it is category, then give a different color. So that's okay. what we have to do. Okay. So, and do you, can we, do we have time to demo that? I know we're kind of running a bit short on time, but if you're able to, um now or we can bring you back for another episode yeah what we can do is uh a while we introduce other things uh, of the today's series i can create the one and we can showcase at the end okay great that's awesome yeah. thank you so much okay any other questions uh daniel and uh, eileen and natalie oh how can we create dynamic titles using multiple slices like year quarter month week region multiple slicer so again uh, i think this is once you get the hold of selected value you can actually create a dynamic slicer okay so i think the only challenge uh, with anybody is basically uh, you know getting hold of this uh, you know selected value so once uh, according to me you got the hold of the selected value uh, you should be able to do that easily. Okay, awesome. So you're just using the selected values. As long as the, the values in the table, you should be able to do that. Yes. Awesome. This is fantastic. Okay. Um, I think it's Akash said, I just started learning Power BI. Do we have a playlist for it? And how much time will it take to become a good BI analyst? Oh, gosh. I think that's practice makes perfect, right? I think uh, that that's my personal opinion. I think, you know, um, what do you think, Amit? What's the yes. So, so I think uh, it's initially the learning could be, you know, as fast as you can learn Power BI in a week, but practice is going to make you perfect. It's going to take a little bit of time, at least two, three months when you start feeling comfortable. And as you progress, uh, you know, you will feel more and more easier. Now, there are a lot of playlists which are available of, of, and we have a, a blog around that you know uh, where we showcased all the bookmarks links you should bookmark so we have all the channels listed out there which you can take advantage of exactly. and then what you can do is once you start feeling a little bit comfortable go ahead to the community try to solve some of the problems which are there and if you're not able to solve it just look for the solutions which had been done and that will actually help it and that's how i actually learned it mm -hmm. when i was uh, when uh, learning power bi uh, I, after learning a little bit of Power BI, I came to community uh, for my problems. And then what I've done is I slowly start helping out people and start solving those problems. And, you know, used to take the data which they have given, go to the file, try this out, try to look at the solution. If I'm unable to do, I used to wait uh, for some super users to give a solution. And then once they give the solution, I go to practice that. I think that's such great advice, Amit, because... You know, you've you've shared a, a personal story about going to uh, the Power BI community with me, and I'd love for you to share it here. But the the basis is that when you go to the community, that's community.powerbi.com, go and register there. And if you have any questions, ask a question on one of our forums, and one of our super users or our support team would be happy to answer your question. Now, if you so choose, and you are confident, like you said, Amit. You can start answering questions yourself and then you can become a super user. But what happened with you, Amit? What was your inspiration to become a super user? Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> yeah. So I came to community uh, because I was needing some help and start doing it. And my son used to, you know, uh, look at it. And uh, uh, he uh, he was pretty good fan of, uh, you know, uh, Perry and Greg. And he always wanted to see me as a super user. And that's inspired me to continue you know, on community and keep on doing this good job. And uh, so I became super user and now I became MVP also. So That's I think fantastic. community is the uh, best place to, you know, 
enhance your knowledge help others and get helped and it's a wonderful wonderful thing that your son inspired you to to push forward with that even though you were fully engaged it's great to see that you know you have your son inspiring you that's a great story i loved it i loved it okay so any other outstanding questions i think we can go to the um community and ask so go to aka dot ms forward slash pbi show comment uh, again the youtube comments and questions um, stop immediately after the live stream and we can't really continue those on the community so please go to the community if you have any other uh, questions of amit and amit you'll you'll be happy to answer some of those questions right definitely yeah <laughs> awesome awesome well um Thank you for your demo and look, please stay with us on our 10th anniversary show. We just have a couple more things to uh, to tell the community about um, regarding the Power Platform Conference. So we had a great, great Power Platform Conference um, a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to thank everybody, organisers, but most importantly, the community. Thank you for attending in person and supporting us. Um, it was just such a pleasure to meet people in person. Um, it's, you know, for me personally, I met people I have worked with over the over the time of the pandemic and uh, just prior to that actually, but hadn't met them in person, just on Teams. And the one thing that we do say, or well, that, that uh, I say, we're all the same height on Teams. And when you meet somebody in person, I expect everybody to be my height. And uh, nobody was because I'm really short. Um, and it was really a pleasant surprise and really lovely to meet everybody in person. So thank you so much for those who could attend. We really appreciate you taking the time, the effort and spending time with us. It was fantastic. And we have some great news. We've already announced next year's Power Platform Conference. It's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada on October 3 to 5, I believe. And we can go to, do we have that link here? I think it's powerplatformconf.com. That's powerplatformconf.com. And uh, it is uh, October, I'm just checking here, October 3 to 5 and next year in 2023. And we hope to see you there. One of the most inspiring uh, things about the community is how we reach out to underserved communities. And for me personally, a lot of people know I um, founded the Power BI Women's Group and we have some amazing co-organisers. Um, you know, Miko Yuk were, is a trusted advisor, Belinda Allen, who's a Microsoft MVP, Denisha Malone, who was a Microsoft MVP, and then we hired her. <laughs> and then Jackie Chiardi, who's the incomparable Jackie Chiardi and Deborah Jones. We just love your work and we um, we have a lot of passion around helping Power BI women and other communities. I wanted to share a video for those who weren't able to attend the Power Platform Conference, just a small piece of what we did share with the community. So I'm um, hoping, Daniel, do you have that available? I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I'd love to share that with the community if possible, please. I wanted a community that um, can help me through. And I found textiles. And the fact that it's a community of women who are willing to help assist other women, I was so excited. They were patient enough to, you know, take us through. No question was foolish. No question was too simple. And none was too hard. I told myself, by June, I must write this exam. I passed the exam. The whole mission and goal is to just provide a platform so all the rising car addicts around the world can showcase all the amazing things they're building. It's not about like the success of people now, it's about the success of people coming up. If you work with Power Apps, you have in infinite options in your future, and then you have infinite access to all the friends around you. For attending our first annual Power BI Women's Summit. Jump in and use your voice in technology. If you've been invited into a room, you've been invited in there for a reason. Utilize that space and take your space. Let people know your ideas. Let people know that you can think outside of the box. I'm a woman, I'm an MVP, and I Power BI. Hi, I'm Samia Sony, and I Power BI. 
I am Indira Bandari, I Power BI. I'm Mirha Bandari, I Power BI. And I Power BI too. You're muted, Kelly. Sorry. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Uh, I got a bit emotional there. Sorry. I just love working with the community, and we're here to invest in you. We really are. It's um, it's just an amazing experience to connect and help others grow. For me personally, I I love seeing people learn and have those opportunities to grow their careers, to change their careers, and to help others as well. So if you want to um, comment on today's show, please go to aka.ms PBI show comment. And um, if you'd also like to submit a video that we can use in the community, uh, which is just like the ones you saw, which is, you know, your name and I, Power BI, we would love to see those videos. And uh, we might be able to feature those in our future shows. And if you do submit a video, we will be providing you with some great Power BI giveaways. Goodness gracious, there we are. Okay, Daniel. So this has been a great show. We've had some fantastic uh, informational demos from Amit Chandak. Thank you so much, Amit. I'm super excited that you're an, an MVP. Thanks, Kelly. And Kelly, I'm also done with your color example in case you want to showcase. Yes, please. Let's do this. Awesome. Uh, and it's so, for the community. I mean, they, you know, thankfully they asked the question and, you know, you, of course, came up with an answer straight away. <laughs> so if you can see my colors on my screen are changing based on what I'm selecting. Wow. Okay. Well, how did we and, do that? Yeah. So I created a color, very simple color major right now. So when it's category, so again, selected parameters, we select the order first. And based on that order, uh, we found out what actually the name of the axis okay because it directly you can't use selected parameter on access slicer the actual column so we first of all say what is my selected value of order we pass that value and find out the access slicer value and this is going to work on single value so you need to be a little bit careful about that and this particular code okay and then i created a color major where i take the value and change the color now you can write down a pretty complex code post that you can handle the values of nad discount whatever you want subcategory yellow and green and then I just set up it inside my uh, columns, colors, function, conditional formatting. Inside the conditional formatting, we have to use field value whenever you want to use a color major because, and the color major should return color. It should be a text type. And then I selected color major here by searching it. And once I do that, it starts changing here. That's how I do it. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for putting this demo together, number one. And then uh, this color measure. I've never done a color measure, so I'm absolutely going to try that this week. It's awesome. And um, now can I have a commitment for you to come back on the show again and do some more demos and teach us some more uh, in the future? Sure, anytime. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you again so much, Amit. Thank you, Daniel, Eileen, and Natalie. Remember, everybody, you can contact us on Twitter at, um, at ms underscore Kelly K. Amit, what's your Twitter handle? Mine is Amit Chandak 78. Okay, awesome. And then you can also contact us um, uh, on social, on LinkedIn. But more importantly, please connect with us on the community at community.powerbi.com. Go ahead and register. You'll be able to interact with all of the super users who are amazing. You'll have your answers question, uh, your questions, your questions answered. <laughs> and don't forget, if you'd like to win some fabulous socks today, um, please go ahead and put in a comment at aka.ms forward slash PBI show comment. Okay, well, Daniel, Eileen, Amit, thank you again for being here on our 10th anniversary show. Thank for you sure. all, Natalie. And uh, just one more thing. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone. Uh, thank you to the community. Thank you, Amit and Kelly, for an awesome uh, 10 episodes. Congratulations. I did want to give a plug because it is a special week. We have, uh, you know, we have our Power BI show today, but also yes. coming up on Thursday, 
we have a very exciting dev camp, um, which you may see me on or hear me on as well. But I would definitely uh, check that out at uh, aka dot ms slash pbi dev camp and uh, ted pattison will be kind of going over um the second part of his series so last month he did um modern react js development yes. and this time he's going to be doing it about app owns data embedding so oh fantastic check that out. and it'll be live streamed as well on youtube so just yeah, Ted's, to Ted's dev camp is spectacular. Thank you so much for the reminder, Daniel. Sure, because yeah. yeah, it was supposed to be last week, but we had all of the hurricanes, so we had to, you know, push it over uh, a week because uh, we needed to have electricity in order to have the show. So glad that everybody that um, in the community that we know here has made it safely through that and looking forward to Ted's dev camp on Thursday. So be there. Okay, so do we call it a wrap for today, everyone? I, I would say just on the dev camp thing, make sure to to brush up uh, because it's a continuation of last month's uh, <laughs> session to watch last month's session before you come to this one. I think that would help a lot. Yep. But yeah, prerequisites. I'll stop talking. <laughs> Br brush up, brush up on the, your previous dev camp on uh, the previous uh, JS dot J, JS dot React. I'm sorry. Um, so you can get the most out of this week's dev camp. Okay. Thank you again, everyone. It's a wrap for today, and we will see you again on the Power BI Community Show. And uh, as I say, we'll meet you in the community.